Uh, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to present this study on behalf of uh, the team here at BIDS, uh, already mentioned, uh, comprising myself, Dr. Kimba, Dr. Serafica, Ms. Vismanos, Mr. Moreno, Ms. Andrada, Ms. Munoz, and Mr. Hernandez. This is already the third time the country has conducted a comprehensive innovation survey. The first one was done more than a decade ago. The conduct of that 2009 pilot survey of about 500 firms was led by BOST with BIDS and the then NSO as uh, the National Statistics Office as cooperating partners. Six years after that pilot survey, PIDS conducted a second survey with double the sample size, though the design of the 2015 survey was still purposive due to budget constraints. This third wave of the innovation survey is now a nationally representative probability survey. In addition, we have a new module in the survey on establishing on establishment use of in internet platforms. And I hope that now that we have an, a National Innovation Council, this will be uh, conducted very regularly. Uh, perhaps in the future, maybe the NIC should be the one taking the lead in this and its analysis so that it feeds directly into the work of the NIC. Next slide, please. As in our study seven years ago, allow me to structure this talk by explaining innovation and the purpose of the study before discussing the results of the survey and the policy implications. While the term innovation, next slide please, means different things to different people, we adopt a broad Schumpeterian view of innovation as the ability to use knowledge to develop and apply new ideas that result in changes in the production and organizational structure of the firm. When people think of innovation, often we think of three things, shiny new products like Apple iPhones or new services such as ChatGPT or Google Bar Google's Bard. Um, second, an improvement in the performance of an existing product, such as an increase in the digital camera, camera resolution in our mobile phones. Or third, a new feature to an existing product, such as the use of electricity in a car. Aside from product innovations, however, firms also have process innovations. One of the most famous examples of process innovation is Henry Ford's invention of the world's first moving assembly line. Firms also have wider forms of innovation, non-technological innovation such as marketing or organizational innovation that add value to products and services used by firms. We are aware of many firms such as Amazon, Airbnb, and Uber, and of course here in the Philippines we use Grab and Ancas that were able to disrupt age-old markets on shopping, hotel, taxi, by tweaking or inverting the industry's traditional business models. The importance of innovation has been cited in the literature even as early as the 1950s. But the push for sustainable development goals, the global goals, has led to further recognition of the importance of innovation in finding enduring solutions to social, economic, and environmental challenges. Thus, the world has committed to fostering innovation in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, particularly with SDG 9 on industry, infrastructure, and innovation. Even in the Philippines, we have started to discuss science, technology, and innovation in our Philippine development plans. And of course, now we have a National Innovation Council that is in charge of coming up with a roadmap on innovation. In the 22 Global Innovation Index report, next slide please, the Philippines ranks 59th among 132 economies in the world. The GII consists of roughly 80 indicators grouped into innovation inputs and outputs to capture the multidimensional nature of innovation. The country has done well in yielding innovation outputs despite the low inputs as suggested by the rankings. 
Relative to its GDP, the latest GII report also noted that the Philippines' innovation performance is performing better for its level of development. Next slide, please. Our current study is essentially part of a continuing effort to determine where we are in the terms of innovation activities of firms and what needs to be done to foster innovation. Our previous surveys provided as a means to benchmark our national performance in innovation to describe determinants, barriers, and bottlenecks to innovation. For this recent survey, we have 10 times more the survey respondents in 2017 to get a nationally representative reading. This is extremely important as previous surveys purposively focused on sectors where we assumed that innovation activity would be very strong, particularly ICT and the BPM sectors. Now, we are getting not only a nationally representative reading, but also information on the use of digital platforms by firms. A little over 5% of the firms were also interviewed in the 2015 survey. Next slide, please. Together with the Philippine Statistics Authority, we carefully designed the survey to ensure that the sampled establishments would mirror the sampling frame of all establishments in the country. By major sector, with 90% of targeted firms covering sectors we did not cover in the 2015 survey. As in other establishment surveys, target respondents for the surveys are the owners and managers of the sampled establishments. Reference periods for the survey has been set for the calendar year 2021 for most data. The survey has been designed to be self-administered by the responding establishments. Next slide, please. Just a few things to note. When we profile the establishments, we find that four-fifths of firms have local markets. Two-fifths have national markets. About a third have markets in ASEAN, and 2.8% have markets outside of ASEAN. As expected, PESA firms have the largest markets outside for, uh, for ASEAN and all other countries. Next slide, please. While it might seem that the overall employment is 50-50 for both sexes, we slightly see a different profile by major sector with agriculture and industry employing more men than women. However, the bulk of employment is in services, which employed more women. Most employed are in the age group 25 to 34, except for males in agriculture, which has the highest employment among the group 35 to 44. Next slide, please. Firms on average have a fourth of the, their employees with bachelor's degrees or higher. In agriculture, the proportion is even is only a fifth, 19.4% of males, compared to a fourth in industry, 25.6%, and 22.9% in services. Among women in firms in agriculture, 27% have bachelor's degrees or higher, while the comparable rate in industries and services is 20.3% and 24.3% respectively. Likely, the skills of human resources is what may partly explain whether or not the firm is innovating. Next slide, please. Earlier, we pointed out that we adopt the broader and Schumpeterian view of innovation as the accumulation of knowledge and implementation of new ideas. Specifically, innovation is the implementation of a new or a significantly improved product, good or service, or process, a new marketing method, or a new organizational method in business practices, workplace organization, or external relations. Following the OECD measurement of innovation in the Frascati manual, we adopt as operational definition that the firm was, an, was innovation active if it, was, it either was a product innovator, a process innovator, or if it spent in innovation activities, or further, if it or, engaged in abandoned or, in, or ongoing innovation projects during the in, in reference year. Several observations can be made regarding the definition in particular. Firstly, an innovation must be novel 
or a significant improvement at least to the firm and possibly to the market or outside uh, or higher levels and must be implemented. In other words, introduced inside the firm or commercialized. There is no requirement for the innovation to be successful. Secondly, the definition of innovation activity does not mention the intention or objective of innovation, although implicitly, innovation aims at improving the firm's competitive position. And, of course, that is associated with, with uncertainty. Thirdly, there is no reference in the broad definition to technology. In the 22, in, in this uh, recent uh, survey, as in our past surveys that measure innovation, we also asked firms various questions on whether they engaged in wider or non-technical, non-technological forms of innovation, whether marketing or organizational innovation. Next slide, please. And now to the main results. About a third of firms are innovation active. 22% of firms are product innovators and 27% are process innovation innovators. Okay, next slide, next slide please. Innovation varies across sectors. As is to be expected, ICT leads in innovation activity and in product innovation. About two fifths of firms in ICT are innovation active compared to only a quarter of firms in agriculture. A quarter of firms in ICT are also product innovators. On the other hand, less than a fifth of the agriculture sector firms are product innovators. As regards pr process innovation, 30% of firms in ICT, 26%, 26.6% in food manufacturing, and 26.3% in other manufacturing are process innovators, but only 17.3% of firms in agriculture per se are process innovators. Next slide, please. Innovation also depends on the size of the establishment. With larger firms leading in innovation activity, almost two-fifths of large firms are innovation active compared to just a third of MSMEs. Large firms also engage more on product and process innovation than their smaller counterparts. Next slide. In 2021, the survey results show that 7.5% of establishments had some innovation-related expenditure. Large firms spent as much as 13.2 million pesos on average on innovation activities, more than 10 times the average spending of all firms, 1.28 million pesos. Median firms spent uh, 12.4 million pesos in 2021, while small firms spent only 1.6 million pesos. Micro firms spent 800,000 pesos, 0.7% of their total gross sales, about 60% of that for all establishments, just 1.3%. Across sectors, ICT firms on average spend the most at 7.9 million pesos, followed by non-manufacturing industries, 2.4 million pesos, other manufacturing, 1.9 million pesos. Agriculture also spends the highest in innovation relative to gross sales at 11.5% compared to the that of the next, which is ICT at 3.7%. We also observe variation in spending in innovation by location. As of 2021, Balance Luzon firm spent 1.6 million pesos followed by Visayas and NCR at 1.5 million, Mindanao spent only 0 0.09 million pesos. Among firms that spent on innovation, the most commonly reported activities were in, uh, in the acquisition of machinery. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, equipment and software. This was followed by spending on in-house R&D and personal services related to innovation at 15%. Uh, Next slide, please. Among manufacturing and ICT sectors, in-house R&D was the primary innovation activity. Agriculture and the rest of services mainly spent on acquiring machinery, equipment, and software. Next slide, please. 
Other tech, non-technological innovations are also implemented in firms either in conjunction with product or process innovation or as an in independent mechanism of improving competitiveness and productivity. Three in eight firms on average are engaged in organizational innovation. Among medium, 54% and large, about 48% of firms um, had actually engaged in organizational innovation, which is about half of all the firms. Across sectors, ICT and BPO have the largest proportion of firms engaged in organizational innovation at 41% and 44% respectively. As regards marketing innovations, about a third of firms are marketing innovators. Nearly all, 98%, are equipped with knowledge management practices. A quarter of firms are aware of government innovation policy, and a tenth, about 9.7%, have availed of public financial support for innovation. In 2021, about 26% of innovation active firms filed for internet intellectual property rights, especially in registering a trademark. The filing of IPRs is 3.5 times higher among innovation active firms than among establishments that did not innovate. Next slide, please. For the 2022 um, uh, survey, just like the 2015 survey, we asked firms questions related to government procurement contracts. Only 3.5% of establishments undertook innovation as part of a procurement contract to provide goods and services to a public sector organization, of which about half uh, did so as the innovation was required from the procurement contract. Regu regulatory barriers appear to be the biggest uh, reported challenge in providing innovative activities, uh, innovative goods and services to the public procuring entity with nearly 40% of firms reporting challenges on regulatory barriers. Next slide, please. Although the information presented so far in innovation activity across firms, including the various visualizations and dashboards of cross tabulations, suggest already the factors that may influence innovative behavior among firms, they don't explain the effect of these firms on innovation in the presence of other factors. So to do, to do this, we identif to identify the specific determinants of innovation but netting out effects, we made use of a logistic regression, the variables examined in the logistic model to explain how likely firms are product innovators, process innovators, organizational innovators, marketing innovators, and technological innovators in general include things such as gross sales, age of firm, share of employees with a post-baccalaureate degree, export orientation, in other, in other words, whether or not the firm has some geographic markets in ASEAN or out, uh, other countries, foreign ownership, whether or not the firm has foreign, foreign capital participation, interaction of export orientation and foreign ownership, and the share of female employment. Uh, further, next slide, please. We also look into the location of the firm, the sector, whether the firm is uh, in agriculture. Um, next slide, please. Food manufacturing, other manufacturing, uh, non-manufacturing industry, ICT, BPO, or other services, and engagement in knowledge management practices. The results of the econometric mo uh, model suggest that, first, uh, next slide, please. In general, the practice of knowledge man management practices in firms is a good determinant of innovation activities, process innovation, product innovation, and wider forms of innovation. Human resources also matter. The share of employees with post-baccalaureate degrees has a positive, significant effect for innovation activity, pro product innovation, uh, process innovation, and organizational innovation. Regarding location, Firms in Metro Manila are, surprise, surprise, less likely to be innovation active, process innovators, or marketing innovators. Also, foreign ownership matters on innovation activity, process innovation, organizational innovation, and marketing innovation. Okay, um, next slide, please. 
Just as in the two uh, past surveys, we, firms are also asked about the perceived effects of technological innovation. Respondents were asked to rank a number of likely effects on innovation on a scale from not relevant, which is four, through low, um, uh, three, uh, low is three, medium is two, or high uh, one, perceived effects. And while the results varied across industry and size of firms, establishments reported that the main effects of innovation are mainly customer driven. Product oriented effects are more often higher rated by firms rather than process related effects. Next slide, please. Disaggregating perceived effects by major sector, it is observed that product and process oriented effects are more likely to be rated as high by industry and services rather than uh, firms in agriculture. Agriculture firms perceive the importance of innovation in improving labor productivity and efficient use of materials and energy. By size of firms, the importance of process-oriented effects is more apparent among larger firms. Compared to uh, large firms, a higher percentage of small and medium firms rated the effects on quality of goods and services as high. Next slide, please. Organizational innovation was mainly perceived to be uh, substantially contributing to improving quality of goods and services, improving communication or information sharing, increasing public awareness of the company, product and service. Um, compared to industry and services sectors, organizational in innovators in agriculture, however, are less likely to rate the effects of innovation, organizational innovation as high. Next slide, please. Um, introducing innovation in a firm can be very complex and requires the coordination of multiple inputs. Firms can gain techni technical advice, guidance, or some inspiration for their innovation from several sources of information. These sources of technology, innovation-related knowledge and information may be internal, uh, for instance, uh, th that is from within the establishment itself, or from establishments within the enterprise, or external from the market, uh, institutions such as academia, government, or other sources. Most establishments, just like in the previous surveys, report internal sources, 31%, and market sources, especially clients, about 34%, as the most important sources for information on innovation. Two-fifths of large firms rated internal sources as, and customers as highly important for innovation, while among MSMEs, the corresponding proportions were uh, also were about uh, a third. Um, meanwhile, institutional sources of innovation and knowledge, particularly government or public research instit institutes or associations, were, just like in previous surveys, considered by firms to be of lowest importance on information, information and innovation. Next slide, please. Uh, around 14% of innovation active um, firms are engaged in innovation cooperation with other establishments or non-commercial institutions. The proportion of um, uh, innovators across industries with innovation cooperation ranges from 7.4% uh, in man food manufacturing to 9 um, 19 point, uh, I think you need to go to the past slide, 19.9% uh, .9 in ICT. Um, innovation cooperation is, is higher among innovation active large firms uh, than the corresponding MSMEs. The overall picture is that knowledge uh, networks are largely limited and uh, with firms tending to cooperate with establishments within the enterprise, um, uh, their uh, customers and uh, their suppliers. The survey also asked establishments, both innovators and non-innovators, to assess the importance of various factors in hampering innovation activities or influencing the decision to innovate. They were asked to rate the degree of importance as high, medium, low, or not experienced. The figures on screen show the results of the responses that were considered of high importance uh, in terms of barriers to innovation. As in the 2015 uh, survey, 
The cost factors were considered the most common set of issues related by firms as the significant barriers to innovation. Firms reported that cost factors such as expensive costs on innovation itself and the lack of funds are the most important barriers to innovation, particularly for large innovative uh, firms. Uh, specifically, 16.5% of establishments considered the prohibitive cost of innovation of high importance. This is followed by lack of funds within the establishment and from other sources at 15% and 12.12% 12 uh, 12 respectively. By size, the proportion of MSMEs was uh, greater than that of large establishments that rated the different barriers to innovation as highly important, except in a few cases where the difference are small, less than a percentage point. However, the di difference in perception by large firms and MSMEs on the importance of the, the factors changes depending on whether the firm was innovation active or not. For those that were innovation active during the period, a greater percentage of large establishments than of MSME, MSMEs considered the barriers of, uh, of high importance, except for one knowledge factor, the lack of qualified personnel, although the difference is very small. For firms that were not innovation active during the period, the pattern is reversed as the proportion of MSMEs were higher for all factors except for Two issues, no demand and prior innovations, but by a very small margin only. Regardless of size, a bigger percentage of innovation active firms compared to the non-innovation active firms rated the importance of the various factors as high. See this figure and the next figure as well. Uh, compared to other sectors, a larger proportion of establishments in uh, agriculture regarded the importance of the barriers as high. Uh, this was the general pattern except for one factor, uncertain demand for innovation goods or services where industry had a slight edge. Uh, for establishments that were innovation active during the period, agriculture had the biggest proportion of establishments that regarded the importance of each of the factors as high and the cost factors were deemed especially significant among innovation act active firms in the agriculture sector compared to other sectors. For those that were not innovation active, the industry sector had the biggest uh, proportion of firms that rated the importance of all three market factors and two knowledge factors as high, while agriculture took the lead with the rest of the barriers, particularly in terms of innovation cost. A quarter of firms uh, were aware of government innovation policies. 82% were aware of DTI policies. Congratulations to DTI, very popular. 25% were aware of DOST, while 20% were aware of DICT. And as point, pointed out earlier, only 14% availed of government assistance on their innovation activities. Um, tax deductions were operated among highly important incentives for both MSMEs and large firms, regardless of location, the same goes for industry and services. Firms in both industry and services also consider tax credit highly important. Services prefer more training, however, while industry leans more on tax holidays uh, among their top three highly important incentives. Agriculture prefers direct subsidies, training and technical support. NCR firms consider tax-related incentives to be highly important. Okay, the top three programs regarded as highly important were number one, tax deduction, number two, tax credits, and number three, training. One of the three modules of the current survey is a battery of questions on the use of internet platforms, which is defined as digital intermediaries and infrastructures that bring together various par par parties such as sellers and buyers of products and services, um, including even advertisers, through the, through the internet to interact, thereby uh, matching supply and demand to a multi-sided market. We know that there are so many examples of this digital or internet platforms, which include social media platforms, uh, Facebook, um, uh, Viber, Instagram, uh, also, we have e-commerce platforms, Lazada, Shopee, Zalora, and other platforms such as Google for uh, search engines, 
um, Grab, Lala Move, and Angkas for ride, ride sharing or logistic services. Netflix, YouTube, Spotify for media streaming, Airbnb for uh, accommodation services, Zoom and WebEx for video conferencing, Gcash, PayMaya, PayPal, Coins for e-money. Uh, it turns out that a quarter of uh, firms reported having used platforms in 2021. By innovation activity, nearly half, 45% of innovation active firms use platforms compared to merely a fifth, uh, 20% among uh, firms that were not innovation active in 2021. By size of firms, a bigger share of medium, uh, 37%, and large firms, 35%, use digital platforms compared to micro firms, 26%, and uh, small firms, 33%. We asked firms to identify the top three platforms they used. And based on their listings, the top three platforms used by all firms that used platforms in 2021 are, surprise, surprise, number one is Facebook by a wide margin. Next is Google. Um, then we have Gcash, Messenger, Instagram, Shopee, Grab, Foodpanda, Lazada, uh, they also said website. I'm not sure what they meant. Uh, Viber and Zoom. Okay. Anyways, uh, um, among platform users in 2021, a third, 33%, said they own or manage platforms. Uh, about half, 52%, sell their uh, products and services in a platform. And a quarter report um, purchasing products or, or services in platforms with more than half, 55%, saying that they, they advertise their firm or their firm's products and services in platforms. We then asked a, a series of questions for platform owners, though likely, I mean, when we were reading through the results, it seems the firms misunderstood ownership of platforms to mean having Facebook pages. Because when we asked them what were, if you own platforms, you can you identify the, 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 the specific website and they were citing very often Facebook pages. No? Um, or perhaps they might have their own websites, but they were not real platforms, but just the fact that they had internet web, they had websites, they thought that were, that was already a platform. No? So I think uh, this is one of the key things that we need to rethink in, in future surveys. We report here nonetheless some of the information uh, provided by firms who said they are platform owners, although I, I already mentioned that I, I have a little bit of concern with the, with the results of this survey. Uh, anyways, um, firms said they largely use platforms for number one, surprise, surprise, messaging uh, or communication, 20.6%, and social networking features, 25.5%. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Three-fifths, about 59% of platform owners, report that the platforms are open to third-party users, mostly buyers, workers, employers, advertisers, and sellers. Uh, from January 2021 to December 2021, the share of platforms that acted as a marketplace were about um, 20%. Uh, around 10% of platforms reported to be a part of the sharing economy that allowed sharing of access to underused or unused goods and services. Also, uh, we reported uh, owners of platforms suggest that the drivers of uh, growth of the platform um, are largely more transactions um, followed by more customers. Further, the geographic markets are either local or national. The average revenue of platform owners for 2021 from national and international uh, trade or cross border transactions is around 140 million pesos and 8.7 million pesos, respectively. By major sector, average revenues are highest in industry. Most report revenues coming from service and, and product sales. 17.5% or transaction fees at 7.8%. More than half um, of platform owners, about 55%, uh, report that platforms, can you go to the next slide? Uh, 
set the prices and circumstances of logistics. A firm, uh, a fifth, about 19.4%, uh, report that the third parties can set their prices and circumstances of logistics, while a quarter, about 26%, say it is others, most of whom report the owner or management of the firm. The top two factors to have affected the prices or circumstances of logistics in 2021 are location at 14.5% and demand at 11%. Uh, half, 52.5% uh, of uh, platforms report daily transactions of about 10 or below in uh, the internet uh, platform. And a quarter suggests between 11 to 50. Uh, in 2021, the average number of client services, sellers, and advertisers in platforms were uh, was about 600. Uh, uh, was 2020 was 2025, and uh, 621 and 293 respectively, with variations across major sectors, services topping the sectors. More than half, 56% uh, of platforms advertise in their own platforms. The average share of foreign, foreign ownership of platforms is around 1.4%. The top three funds for, used by platforms are um, personal savings, loans, and venture capital. The top three uh, taxes mentioned by platforms are income tax, 23%, uh, value-added tax, 18%, and withholding tax at 17%. Nearly half, 43% of platforms admitted collecting platform users' data, including personal ID at around 11%, payment data, 8%, service transaction data, also 8%, product transaction data, 7%, and phone contacts at 6%. Largely, they said they were using this to communicate with uh, better with users, to provide better user experiences, to operate, maintain, and provide features and functionalities of the platforms, products, and services. Most employees, um, about 84%, directly employed for the platform operations have bachelor's degrees or higher, especially in services. The work arrangements of these uh, platform employees are largely telecommuting and uh, part-time. Less than half, uh, about 45% of platforms reported that users needed to set up an account to be able to access products and services on their platform in 2021. The type of verification process required for platform companies were largely personal appearance or interview, uh, two-factor authentication uh, that's uh, sent to the uh, email or mobile number, and third, the submission of a valid ID. Uh, we also had uh, set, sets of questions for platform sellers, buyers, and advertisers, but they were largely left unanswered because, as I mentioned, I think many uh, many firms misunderstood uh, just uh, having uh, uh, you know be, be considering themselves as platform users. Uh, sorry, platform owners. Thanks. Um, turning to plat policy issues, um, we know that the further innovation in Philippine business industry is a challenge given the constraints in the country that uh, we work with the scarce resources, including the, the requisite innovation mindsets and workforce skills. Uh, also, we have competing aims of public policy as well as institutional issues. And given the key findings of this survey, we would like to highlight some policy issues. As regards Barriers to Innovation, the Philippine Innovation Act contains various interventions already to in address specific barriers to innovation. But while this law was signed in 2019, the implementing rules and regulations were approved a year later. And then it took a while even to give seed funding for, for uh, this new agency, the National in Innovation Council under NEDA, that's supposed to steer innovation in the country. No? Although we're glad that there are now uh, some people from the NIC here. Um, but it took a while for, for the law to become operational. Uh, a robust MNE system must be developed to determine the effectiveness of the Philippine Innovation Act. And I hope that's one of the things that uh, the National Innovation Council will look into. Future surveys can also help track the progress and impact of interventions. 
the results of the survey can also provide guidance on where specific innovations could be focused. As the result, uh, survey results show, a large proportion of establishments in agriculture regard the importance of the different barriers to innovation as high. Also, we uh, government needs to work with the private sector to foster innovation, particularly through reskilling and upskilling the workforce. And I'm glad, however, the Innovation Council has a number of people from the innovation uh, from the private sector, whether retired people or currently pe current uh, uh, people employed in the private sector. There is a clear relationship between the skills of employees and innovation activity of firms. In previous studies, we sadly pointed out that in ASEAN, the Philippines is a laggard, particularly in digital skills. Innovation, we know, is about the accumulation of knowledge capital that enters firms and the public sector or the production, national production function, along with the physical uh, and human capital. R&D spending, however, will have very little impact without a vast pool of skilled human resources, especially R&D engineers and scientists amid the growing threat that AI poses on jobs. Digitalization in government and the private sector must be promoted and enhanced. And I'm glad the president has already suggested this. He wants to have a lot more digital transformation, especially in, in government. The pandemic pushed firms to digitalize and use platforms, but the extent of platform use still can be improved. A concrete policy and, and public in, interventions on digital skills is needed very strongly. And as regards strengthening the linkages between knowledge producers and users, government needs to promote free exchange of ideas and free flow of knowledge from outside companies while large firms need to cooperate for innovation. I mean, it's sad that it still is apparent from firms that they think of the academe as a very um, how do you say this? Very as uh, outside uh, of the their you know the 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 information the the you know the 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 the, the set of institutions that give them uh, information and innovation. A better understanding of linkages between skills and innovation is needed. Of course, there is danger in having much more investments, but not well thought out ones having more training, more funds on education, but it matters where, the, where we spend these funds on. Simply more is better prescriptions will not achieve desired outcomes. We must also emphasize that improving support for innovation activities for business is crucial. By uh, firms introduce, introducing innovation, they differentiate themselves from competitors and capture a larger share of the market. This can result in increased sales and revenues as customers are drawn to the unique and improved uh, offerings. And establishments can also streamline their operations, reduce waste, op optimize resource uh, utilization. Lastly, innovation can open up new markets uh, by developing innovative solutions that address unmet customer needs. The survey results confirm that when establishments embrace innovation, they actually generate higher revenues and therefore uh, batch better productivity. Targeted uh, assistance to MSE, MSMEs, as far as this is concerned, the current and even past surveys have already been showing that large firms are the ones more likely to innovate, uh, especially as they are in a better financial capacity to innovate. Also, there are various barriers and bottlenecks faced by MSMEs. Particularly, they need uh, to be supported with the aim of using innovation to help them eventually uh, get become larger sized and more productive firms, more productive firms. Uh, strengthening linkages between knowledge producers and uh, users, I already sort of suggested that, that we need to give, uh, given the shift towards a much more open system of innovation and, and the importance of knowledge management practices as a determinant of innovation, the government needs to actively promote the free exchange of ideas and free no and knowledge and flow of knowledge from outside of companies. A whole of government and whole of society are really needed. 
the last administration provided a number of documents the, that say well, we should uh, you know, be using whole of government approaches in, in public sector management. But I, I'm afraid it failed to explain to, to government agencies what exactly does this mean other than to have meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't solve problems merely with having more meetings in government. National government agencies and local government units together with legislators um, will need to work in tandem with the academic and, and business sectors to foster innovation, to have one voice over the cacophony of discordant voices that sometimes we hear from various government entities. Data sharing is an important element of a whole of government and whole of nation paradigm. Regarding regulatory frameworks, government must also look into the current regulatory environment, including uh, the frameworks, because uh, regulator, regulators have a tendency to focus on implementing regulations uh, over, consi over considering the ultimate goal of public welfare. Uh, NEDA, particularly the NIC, together with uh, legislators and regulators have to be seriously examining the extent to which regulations are becoming barriers to innovation. Uh, although innovation uh, derives a lot from science and technology or R and R&D, government needs to build a good science base. I'm, I'm glad the DOST has already identified a long-term uh, science and technology plan. However, um, you know, we need to be able to communicate this much more effectively. Innovation is really practiced uh, in the economy to add value to products and services. So it's important to pursue an impact evaluation of large funded SNT projects to determine what has worked and what ha has not. As was pointed out in past reports, Government focus on removing barriers and bottlenecks to innovation that I already mentioned, providing meaningful and impactful support to innovators, investing in required technology, re research infrastructure, and R&D researchers, carrying out appropriate reforms in education, the investing, investment climate, and trade. Innovation policy acts within a context, typically an, a, an establishment an established institutional setting that can be crowded with so many agencies having limited financial resources to support innovation. So I, I hope the NIC will really start really examining uh, with, the, with the main uh, innovation actors here no? to try to figure out what exactly needs to be done. No? Because it, you can always have plans, but at the end of the day, how are they going to be implemented? Also, we need to formulate uh, complementary policies that reduce regulatory burden, enforce competition, promote openness to trade and investment. Certainly, the uh, country needs an innovation framework and plan of action, and I'm very glad the NIC has already uh, identified a national a, a, an act. They have, uh, in fact, the president has just last month, if I recall right, already approved the national. Uh, the, um, uh, the blueprint no? for innovation, but this may need much more involvement from the private sector and academe. Uh, as, and of course, also, uh, I'm hope that, hoping the president will be the main champion in government. <laughs> While there is some advantage uh, that uh, now this uh, set of policies are being done by NEDA and particularly the NIC, but there are also risks because as you was uh, seems to be suggested, the you know, the when it comes to innovation policy and action, this has always been regarded as being led by DTI or DOST or even D DICT. You know? So NEDA is a, in a way uh, not quite well known in innovation. So that's the, uh, the the struggle that NIC will have to think about. Finally, we should realize that innovation policy can be very complex. So it will be important to continue regular monitoring of where we are. The country has so far conducted three rounds of the survey. The management, however, of innovation, the innovation ecosystem in the country, we call it Philip Innovation, will not be effectively done if what is being managed is not being measured. Thank you and good afternoon.